诶、呃，我哋嘅。All、right, members,、um, it's about time to make a start. We have attained the quorum. Uh, shall we invite the administration in, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have no big that the chief B Fing. But these names don't have to be read once. Wang Ouman, Chen. Good morning. I'd like to welcome the officials from the administration. We have、um, officials、uh, from the HAB, LWB,、um, the SWD, and HAB, and they are dealing with、um, issues to do with the elderly. We have uh, received an、um, information note、uh, from the secretariat and also a paper from the administration. The elderly issues cover a broad、um, spectrum of things. Uh, perhaps uh, let's invite the administration to very briefly、uh, take us through、um, the paper. I won't restrict members to any particular subject because it cuts across、uh, so many different issues、um, to do with housing and healthcare and so on. Perhaps、uh, within this,、um, uh, the duration of this meeting, we can、um, ventilate our views. All right?、Uh, who will take us through the paper, please? Madam Tam, Andy Tam. Chairman, thank you. The government has been concerned about、um, the needs of the elderly. We. Provide a financial support、um, to the needy elders. We also provide a wide variety of services to the elderly,、uh, healthcare,、um, and housing, and so on. Very briefly, I, I'd like to highlight、uh, some of the key points、uh, included in the paper. I won't cover every single one because you have the papers in front of you. In terms of financial support,、um, the elderly can apply for the CSSA. Under the CSSA, the Uh, senior citizens enjoy a higher rate than、uh, other people. They also get、um, special grant、um, for classes, dental, and、um, uh, dietary uh, service. Those、uh, 65 without、um, signing on the CSSA, they can apply for OAA.、Uh, for those、uh, aged 70, they don't need to be means tested. The administration is.、Um, Preparing、uh, for the Guangdong scheme、uh, in the second half this year, this will be coming on stream. We hope that、um, we will be able to help uh, those uh, who choose to reside in Guangdong but are eligible uh, for the、um, OAA. They will continue to enjoy the OAA while residing in Guangdong. In April,、uh, we will implement、uh, the OALA, the Old Age、uh, Living Allowance,、um, to offer to. A thousand two hundred dollars for those aged sixty-five、uh, and above. We also look after the needs of、um, other elderly people. It doesn't mean that they are poor, but we feel that whether they are poor or not,、um, they do need to have an active and aging, a healthy aging、um, process. SWD、uh, and the、um, the COP. Uh, provide、um, the neighbourhood active、uh, ageing project, the NAAP.、Um, the SWD、uh, through the improvement of the、uh, centres for the elderly, 237 elderly centres will be improved、uh, so that、um, they will enjoy a more comfortable environment. Ageing、um, at home is、um, the, the preferred option. In September 2013. Uh, we have、um, the CCS、uh, voucher scheme on a pilot basis. We also、um, increased、um, increased the subsidised、uh, RCHE places、um, to look after the frail elders. 
In terms of health care, we provide um, comprehensive um, health care services. Those on CSSA uh, will be um, having their fees waived, and those are not non CSSA elderly. They can apply for uh, a waiver of uh, the medical fees at public hospitals. We also provide the health care vouchers, uh, the pilot outreach, primary dental care, and vaccination program. In terms of housing, in order to promote um, the idea of um, aging in place um, through the housing authority, we make sure that um, the senior citizens are living in rental housing will enjoy uh, different um, schemes. So we have the harmonious family schemes. Um, we we um, encourage um, elderly people to live with um, their family members. We also have the rental assistance scheme to um, ease the financial burden of the senior citizens. We also have um, the enhancing self-reliance through partnership uh, scheme run by the HAD, um, whereby the social enterprises are set up to serve the elderly people. There are currently 17 um, to do with um, uh, escort um, health care and the sale of um, health uh, products for the senior citizens. Chairman, the government uh, will continue to pay attention to the needs of the elders. We are also acknowledging the effects of um, the aging population. Myself and my um, colleagues, I would be only too delighted to answer members' questions. Or any supplement from other officials? If not, um, we have three members on the list uh, Tam Yu Chong, Fernando Chong, and uh, Mr. Lang Yuchong. Mr. Tam Yu Chong. Chairman, if I may put this to the uh, Permanent Secretary uh, regarding uh, the OALA. I bumped into some uh, elderly people on the street uh, and they uh, would ask me how to make the application. Uh, I will ask them whether they are uh, 65, uh, whether they are on CSSA, uh, whether they are on the uh, the fruit money, whether they started collecting these uh, uh, from 65. And I, th I told them that if this is the case, they don't have um, to um, go through any application process and they will be given automatically. I'm wondering whether the SWD should mount uh, some publicity. There are many elderly people who are very impatient. They know that they don't get it straight away, but they would be concerned about the application process um, that they have to go through. And if they do uh, have to go through this process, where um, they go um, to, to get this done? So for those uh, aged 65 and above, uh, you might wish to explain the details to them. Uh, as I said, uh, some of them are already on the fruit money. They don't have to do anything at all. But for those uh, who are not on fruit money and they would like to make the application, now even for those who are on fruit money, they they are concerned uh, whether they have to um, go through these formalities uh, again. So you might wish to mount uh, some publicity, or these councillors uh, may be able to help. Second, the Guangdong scheme. Why is it that this has been delayed? Um, Again and again, uh, have there been any technical difficulties that you encountered? Permanent Secretary, Chairman, thank you. OALA, the actual implementation is something that we are very concerned. The senior citizens should be aware of uh, all the details. There will be a publicity. Uh, perhaps I call upon um, Madam Long to uh, fill members in on the details. The Guangdong scheme, it is uh, proceeding according to the timetable. Assistant Director uh, Madam Long uh, can uh, further elaborate. With your permission, Chairman. Five minutes each, perhaps. Assistant Director. Um, I'm glad that um, on the 7th of December we got the funding. We are making um, preparation for that, a full steam. I agree with uh, Mr. Tam that the senior citizens uh, should be made fully aware of um, the details. At the present moment, through various channels, uh, we're making the senior, senior citizens aware of the arrangement. And there may be uh, different arrangements for different um, age groups. So we have published pamphlets and uh, APIs. 
We've also uh, asked the district uh, welfare officers uh, to uh, carry out publicity, and also through the ward offices of uh, councillors, uh, we would like to get a message across. By early part of uh, February, uh, these uh, publicity uh, will be mounted. Of those um, uh, who are on OAA, uh, those who have um, been means tested already, and that there will be an automatic conversion for them to uh, to be given the um, uh, the allowance. They will receive a, a letter by uh, February, where we'll be writing to them individually. There may be some uh, who are on the. Um, um, the uh, high rate um, OAA and also the uh, disability allowance by March or end of March, um, they they will uh, be um, receiving uh, our letter. They don't have to approach our office, and uh, they can make the application by mail. For the others, um, maybe they are not um, on the OAA or the uh, DA, and if they wish to make an application, uh, then they. Um, they they will be able to do so in April. And this is a very user friendly uh, procedure. However, we have to um, introduce the scheme to the citizens uh, one by one. So there will be three phases of uh, publicity. Uh, for the first phase, uh, we cover those um, uh, covered by the automatic conversion. Uh, they've already been means tested, and this publicity will be targeted at this group of senior citizens. Uh, by the time they receive the letter in February, unless there are any changes um, to the to their assets, they don't really have to um, reply to us. We will uh, get a message across in all uncertain terms that um, by automatic conversion they will get the um, the money in April, and that will include um, the the payment in April and all the outstanding. Uh, amount uh, f uh, counting from uh, December. The second um, publicity uh, will be for those um, aged uh, 70 and above, or those on uh, uh, OAA at a high rate, um, and DA. I mean, they, they uh, can make the application by mail. So there will be three sets of um, APIs uh, that will be aired. The first batch uh, would be aired by mid early part of uh, February. We are uh, making full preparation. We will be inviting um, the district um, elderly centres uh, to explain further uh, the details to the senior citizens, and they can get in touch with um, the senior citizens and uh, let them have the details. The hotline is so uh, has been up and running. There are ten lines there. The senior citizens uh, are welcome to uh, call the hotline there. The hotline. Uh, it does uh, receive um, a, lot, a lot of calls uh, from the senior citizens. Mr. Tam, well, you said um, the publicity will be mounted in early part of February. By uh, end of February, the those eligible uh, will be uh, receiving the letters. I think uh, the the two days uh, should be closer uh, together until they get the letter. Uh, they would be uh, very apprehensive uh, about the prospect of um, the the payment for those who are eligible. Um, the sooner you write to them, the better. Well, they they may uh, not be getting the money until April, but at least um, you should write to them sooner rather than later to assuage um, their concerns by such and such a date. They will be getting uh, the money uh, by auto pay. So the sooner. Uh, you uh, you write to them the better. Of course, uh, there is an the intervening um, Lunar New Year holidays, but if uh, you keep them keep the two days uh, closer together, it would be better. You mail the publicity, then you receive the letter, it would be better. Make it brief, please, Chairman. Uh, we we are um, um, acting uh, swiftly, and I think this is about the time frame uh, that that um, we 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 can cope with. I know that the senior citizens are concerned about this. Uh, we understand that some senior citizens uh, may be leaving uh, town um, uh, to go to uh, mainland, 
and in the publicity, we would make it very clear that um, uh, the, um, they, they will uh, receive the letter through the mail um, by end of uh, February. I have uh, Teng Ka Piu, Chung Kok Chu, and Li Chao Yan. Mr. Fernando Zhang, Chairman, we are talking about um, elderly poor. Now, if you refer to the manifesto of the chief executive, now there is uh, one point that says uh, a sense of worthiness, um, uh, aging in place, and so on. There is mention of uh, amalgamating. Um, the OAA and CSSA, and uh, exploring the possibility of um, in the, um, application for CSSA on an individual basis, and also the implications on, fin on the finance. Now, this is very important. We are talking about um, elderly poor. To achieve um, tangible results, we have um, to remove from um, the decoration system. Um, so that um, the senior citizens can make application for CSSA on individual basis. Now we uh, create um, this um, OALA and we put in place um, the the um, the OAA, the senior level uh, for senior citizens. The, the problem lies with the fact that um, there is the decoration system. They may be poor, but they are living with um, their children. They have they have the children, but. Uh, if uh, they make um, the, the children sign the declaration form, then they, they were depriving the children of um, the dignity. I don't know how many senior citizens uh, would be confronting their, their children with um, the declaration form um, for them to declare that um, they are not providing any financial support. I don't think many citizens, senior citizens, would be going so far as to, to do that. So, when will the pledge in the manifesto of the CE be, be honored? That is, the means test will be based on an individual basis. When will the administration do this? The OALA is just um, useless. I think what um, the point I'm making is more useful to you. CSSA is in fact part of the social security system. We also have the OH allowance under that as well. And all these allowances are interrelated. The assistance and elderly person we get under the social sec security scheme are all interrelated. And there is a group especially for this. They will set down their own targets uh, and they uh, scope up service. Now, in that case, I don't think it's useful for us to ask the administration to come. We can simply record their answers, and we can take this answer back to the Commission on Poverty for further discussion. For the Commission on Poverty, they hold closed-door meetings. All the materials and information to be discussed at the meetings are all restricted materials. That's why those cannot be should cannot be um, supplied to this subcommittee. So how can we conduct any further discussion? We are simply asking some reasonable and uh, normal questions. We are asking questions based on the manifesto of the chief executive. We are asking for a timetable based on that. And you are telling us that it will be discussed at the Commission on Poverty. But that's the same for every single question we ask. In that case, I don't think we need the subcommittee. You think um, the administration can simply um, fold itself up? Chairman, I said for any changes to be made, it will affect the CSSA. 
and also the core values in the CSSA. So we have to look at the full picture and look at the impact. That's why under the Commission on Poverty, we have a particular task force to look at the particular matters. We do not simply have officials sitting on the task force. We also have professionals from outside. And from the reply of the Secretariat of the Commission, you can also see that they are happy to report back to the LACHCO after they have got some further discussions. Maybe you can reserve your question for the second round because time's up for you for this round. Oh, we have lots of time for discussion today. So next, Mr. Leung Yuchong. Chairman, my question is similar to Dr. Fernando Cheng. I would like to follow up on that matter. This has been on the mind on, of the elderly people for a long time in the 90s. The CSSA was on an individual basis, but it was only later that it was changed to a household basis. So I think we, we are left with a serious matter. This matter is now going to be discussed at the Commission on Poverty. I think for this matter, even if we adopt the old measure, it's not wrong. It's, there's nothing wrong about it. We did not have the declaration system, and in the past, we uh, the system was based on individual application, not household application. I don't know how long it will take for the Commission on Poverty to discuss this matter. Secondly. Are you going to use this um, delay tactics for all the policies? Giving assistance to the poor is a, an urgent matter. People are waiting for you to do something every day. Many young people do not want to sign the declaration form. So what? What happened to the elderly parents? Now, the administration says that the matter will be discussed at the Commission on Poverty. But how are you going to deal with the families, the poor families, where the children do not want to sign the declaration form? How are you going to help the elderly parents? Let me ask the assistant director, Ms. Lung, to answer the questions. This is a kind of financial declaration, what you're referring to, because um, the CSSA is supported by public money. That's why people, the applicants, should make a financial declaration. We are simply asking the children to state the facts, that is, whether they are able to provide financial assistance or support to the elderly parents. And with that information, we can calculate the amount of CSSA the elderly person can get. If the support from the children is not enough, then the, we can provide support to the elderly people with the CSSA. What will happen if the children refuse to sign the declaration form? As long as the elderly applicant tells us about this, we will talk to the children. And if at the end of the case the form is not signed, then we'll ask the elderly applicant to sign the form themselves to state that they are not living on any support, financial support by their children. Does it mean that you take the elderly applicant's words for it? If the children refuse to sign the form, we'll try to talk to the children to see if it's the case that they refuse to sign the form, but they do not have the means to provide for their, tru uh, their parents. And in that case, if that's the case, we'll ask the parents, the elderly parents, to sign the, the dec um, a form. It seems that you haven't addressed the question. And the two generations will be in dispute. 
forever. You have to try other means to see if the children refuse. You talk to the children to see if they refuse to sign the form. But over the course, you already create dispute between the two generations. How can the young children tell other people that they will ignore their parents? Put yourself in the shoe of the younger generation. How can they face up to their parents? And think about the elderly applicants. What will happen to the end? They will simply try to make ends meet, and they suffer a lot. On the face, it seems that you address the issue, but that's not the case. I would like to follow up on the matter of the hidden elderly. You say you will raise the manpower of the community centers. How much more manpower will you put in? How can you address the dispute between the young and older generations so that the elderly applicants can get the CSSA? I defer to Ms. Long. First part of the question, the relationship between the children and the elderly. Please bear in mind, the system is supported by public money, and we're simply asking them to declare the facts is a necessary step for, to take. As for the hidden elderly, I'll defer to my colleagues in the SWD. For the district community center, we already raised the manpower several years ago. In the 41 centers, there is a designated team to help the elderly. We take the initiative to reach out to the elderly people to give them assistance. In this team, we have about 60,000 elderly. We are serving about 60,000 elderly people. Some of them are hidden ones. We also rely on elderly volunteers to reach out to the hidden elderly so that our service will be delivered to these people. I'm asking for how much manpower you've put in, you have increased. So how many more officers have you engaged? And what's the target in 2007 and eight? And 08, we have increased the number of professionals, that is, social workers. We've increased the number of such workers in the neighborhood center and the community center. For each center, one more social worker. We have Mr. Tanka, Pu Li Chak Yen, and myself, Mr. Wu Chi Wai, Chen Kim Po, and Second round for uh, for Fernando Cheng. For the declaration system under the CSSA, I don't think we can resolve this matter at this meeting, but at least give us a reply. A member already read out something in the CE's manifesto to address this. Now, I want to talk about what's happening in reality. Elderly people between 60 and 64, you can call them elderly people, you can call them retirees, you can call them whatever you like. But many of them tell me that they are not very well off financially. They may not have a job, and they may have to take care of the third generation. They may have to take care of their frail spouse or their own parents. Some of them have been working for a long time and they are not in good health. For example, a 60-year-old housewife. Now, these people say that they have great financial hardship. It's not the case that the departments do not recognize them as elderly people, because as long as you are 60, you are entitled to CSSA, and that's the case when it comes to LCSD and other departments, they enjoy concession tickets. For health care voucher scheme, 
However, you have to be 70 to enjoy that. So, in that case, I think you have to address the needs of those between 60 and 64. They do not work long hours because of their health condition. They haven't asked to lower the eligible age of CSSA to 60. They haven't asked for that, but they also have their needs. For example, they are taking care of the children and the parents at the same time. So I hope the Commission on Poverty will also look at the needs of those between 60 and 65 and give them more support. Second question about Guangdong scheme. It has straddled two, two terms of administration. So I hope you can speed things up and give us a clearer timetable about its implementation. In fact, at the Finance Committee, I already s slammed the condition that you ask applicant to stay in Hong Kong continuously for 60 days for, for a year, for 60 days. Now, for those who have stayed in Hong Kong for 59 days, they stand to lose even $7,000. It's not that their assistance will be stopped. Rather, they will be accused of owing the SWD $7,000. Now, you say this is a portable scheme. How come there are so many obstacles, especially when you're asking the elderly people to count how many days they stay in Hong Kong? You do not count from the first day of a year to the end day. Rather, you start the counting on the day of the application. So they have to do the calculation in a difficult way. So please revise that. Please reserve some time for the uh, answer. Permanent Secretary. Um, member, members expressed the concerns uh, for those uh, between 60 and 64 and other uh, people who cannot hold down a full time job. And um, the, the pay uh, may, may be less than uh, what it used to be. And they are not uh, seeking uh, for the OAA to be extended to them. They they understand that um, the public resources should be used uh, for those who are in need, but still they they would like to have uh, some support uh, from the administration. We are aware of that. In Hong Kong, the jobless rate is uh, not particularly high, three point three percent. So we encourage them to. Uh, uh, stay in jobs. Uh, we have um, the uh, travel subsidy scheme. Uh, we have um, the uh, childcare services for them. Uh, we also encourage them to uh, even to do um, casual uh, work. Now, Mr. Tang asked us to uh, show more concerns uh, for these people. We'll have a look and see what um, sort of services can be offered to them. Uh, to make their life uh, better uh, and to enable them to um, to work, the Guangdong scheme and the portability scheme. Uh, why do we still impose um, a residence requirement? Uh, I would defer to my colleague, uh, Ms. Long, Chairman. Mr. Tam and Mr. Tang uh, asked this um, Guangdong scheme. We are making full preparation for that. Now we have to select an agency through a public um, tender, and that would take time. And we also have to upgrade our computerized uh, system. So preparation is in hand. We hope that um, by the middle part of this year, the, uh, it will be launched. Now the uh, continuous stay um, requirement. 
We have been uh, relaxing the uh, residence requirement. At the present moment, uh, they, uh, all they need to do is to stay in Hong Kong for 60 days to be eligible for the full payment. And then we'll offer them more flexibility to uh, visit the mainland of China. Now, the Guangdong scheme, if um, they choose to reside in Guangdong, then they collect the money and they don't have to come back to Hong Kong at all. Uh, even if um, they, they uh, stay in Guangdong for 60 days and they will be eligible for the um, payment. Mr. Li Chang Yan, we keep uh, crit criticizing the administration for acting behind closed doors. Now the government is proving that um, they, they are doing just that. This is no criticism uh, only. This is what they're doing. They, they don't even make available the agenda. You're talking about the Commission on Poverty. Yes, indeed. According to the paper, uh, the agenda will not be made available, and everything will be discussed uh, behind closed door. And Si Wailong always uh, talks about timely, and he's, uh, he says here that um, this will be posted on the web uh, in a timely manner. You are acting behind closed doors. Is it the case that um, only the talents, only the elites uh, who are roped into the COP would be allowed to discuss this issue, and people? In Hong Kong, we will we'll not be allowed any participation. I'm wondering why you have to be acting in this manner. Second, we keep uh, hearing from the administration that um, a poverty line uh, will be set. We're not asking merely for, for the poverty line alone. We need the poverty line to monitor the administration. We need the poverty line to uh, ascertain whether people are lifted out of poverty. Now you you talk about forty, fifty, six percent of um, the household income. The HKCSSA of uh, four hundred seventy thousand uh, CSSA uh, recipients, uh, two hundred sixty one thousand uh, are senior citizens. They are poor senior citizens. Uh, one person at the level is 3,275, uh, 2P, uh, 7,100. Now, you talked about uh, all these uh, myriad uh, measures. If you measure them with the poverty line, I'm sure that um, they will not be eligible uh, for the 3,000 odd dollars, with the exception of um, the CSSA. So that's why we talk about um, the declaration uh, system because it's only the CSSA uh, would um, enable them to get the three thousand odd dollars per month. So we can't monitor all these uh, measures that you have. If I may put this to the permanent secretary, is it the case that um, the existing uh, measures will not be able to uh, lift the senior citizens above? the uh, poverty line. There is a big discrepancy between the manifesto and the policy address of uh, CY Long. According to the manifesto, um, the CSSA and the OAA will be combined, and uh, there can be uh, application for CSSA on individual basis. Um, and that's why we are we're asking for uh, the abolition of the uh, declaration form. Now, this is in the manifesto. But the PA, the policy address, um, is uh, completely silent on that. Now, this is not um, picked up uh, in the policy address at all. How are you going to implement um, what, what is proposed uh, in the manifesto? So the manifesto may not be uh, worth um, the paper it is written on. Uh, should we consign it to, um, to the landfill? Permanent Secretary. Chairman, the CSSA is there to help um, the households um, that are in financial need uh, for them to, to meet um, the daily uh, uh, needs. Poverty line uh, 
Uh, this is talked about a lot in the community. The Commission on Poverty has uh, made the point that uh, within this year, the poverty line will be set. Now, there are three functions of um, the uh, poverty line. Uh, the first one is to quantify the poverty situation. Uh, the second is uh, to provide reference for policy formulation. And the third one is to assess the effectiveness of the poverty alleviation policies. So with um, the poverty line, uh, it would be helping us to achieve um, these three objectives. So this uh, will not help uh, lift people out of poverty. All these measures will not achieve that. Uh, would you agree? Chairman, I, won't, I can't agree with that because the uh, CSSA is um, aimed to help people achieve um, the, the basic needs. Now we have um, the, the $2 fare concession scheme. The senior citizens don't have um, to declare their asset. Um, this is not means tested. We are encouraging the senior citizens um, to, uh, to be more involved uh, in the community. And there are different policy objectives uh, with the different um, uh, policies. So what you said, uh, I, I'm afraid I cannot subscribe to it. Mr. Lee, I don't think you should uh, say this. So you said you're not um, uh, subscribing uh, to my views. Now, what measures can enable the senior citizens uh, to achieve uh, $3,000 individually or 7000 per uh, 2P household? Of the non-CSSA recipients, 260,000 uh, who are falling below the poverty line, unless um, you do away with uh, the declaration system, uh, would you agree that um, they would be able to get uh, $3,275 on an individual basis? Ms. Tam, under the CSSA, uh, we will help um, the families um, meet the daily needs. But we also have uh, other schemes uh, like the OALA. It is intended to supplement um, their uh, expenses. The senior citizens may have other means uh, to, to uh, fall back on. And there are other schemes um, that, that uh, serve other objectives. So uh, we, we shouldn't approach this. Um, using uh, Mr. Lee's um, proposal. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chiang, uh, Chairman, there are four bureaus uh, that are dealing with um, the uh, senior citizens' issues, and there are 20 odd um, measures there. It seems to be uh, pretty comprehensive. But it seems to me that um, the um, policies are very fragmented. Uh, well, I, I heard of them uh, for the first time, I like, like the housing uh, measures. It seems that um, things are very compartmentalized. The age um, threshold uh, is different from scheme to scheme, some 60, some 65, some 70. We understand that um, the lifespan is 80 to 85 at the present moment, maybe a decade or so. Uh, it would go up to um, 85 to 90. If someone uh, retires at 60, there will be 20, 25 years or, or 25 to 30 years in future. Um, after retirement, one third of their life was spent um, in retirement. Have we uh, spared a thought uh, for the senior citizens as to how they um, should lead their life, uh, one third of their life after retirement? Now, all these uh, re uh, measures are remedial in nature. I can't see how these measures can help um, the senior citizens uh, lead a happy life. It's only when they are uh, they find themselves in difficulties that they, they would approach the administration for help. 
can we make sure that um, the elderly would be having a happy life, uh, 30 years or so of happy life, uh, like uh, some sort of protection and some uh, some sort of um, um, positive attitude, housing, health care, education. Uh, can we allow the senior citizens to take part? So my question for the administration is this. Will they conduct um, a comprehensive survey on the, uh, the needs of the, uh, the elderly? It was done before. I mean, if you're not going to do it, I mean, if um, this is not sufficiently comprehensive, how many other items of needs um, that that um, you have conducted the survey on uh, by uh, the different bureaus and the CPU? Thank you. Permanent Secretary, Chairman, we go along with um, Mr. Cheung in saying that um, the life expectancy is getting higher for senior citizens in Hong Kong. That we will uh, spend uh, quite a lot of time uh, in retirement, so we are fully aware of um, the the aging population in Hong Kong. The um, population policy uh, does have regard to this. The policy bureaus uh, are also uh, taking this uh, into account. So we will attach importance to the quality of life for the senior citizens. Other than the uh, remedial measures to make up for um, the shortfall of um, their, their needs, that we do provide services to enhance the, the quality of service for the elderly so that um, they, they will have a more positive outlook in life. Um, so in today's paper, we have uh, highlighted all these measures uh, that, that are not entirely remedial in nature. I talked about um, t the $2 uh, fair concession scheme, and this, is, this has gone down particularly well among the, um, the elderly, whether they are well off or not uh, with this concession, uh, they would go out and about more often they, than they have uh, been ever been before. They'd be visiting their relatives and they, they, they've been um, taking part in various activities and it, it makes, feel them, make, makes them feel better. Um, there is a better quality of life. Uh, some are holding down uh, jobs, uh, not, albeit not on a full-time basis, so maybe delivery job and so on. Uh, also, according to the paper, the uh, SWD has um, also improved and upgraded um, the environment of um, these uh, elderly centers, and they, they will be hanging around and uh, sit together and enjoy the environment. Uh, education, we have the Elders Academy. We encourage um, the senior citizens to engage in volunteer work as we're looking at this uh, from different uh, perspectives. You know, there are many areas we can also look at too because we have a rising aging population. We have to address their health needs. Chairman, a brief question. I don't think the whether there were any I don't think she has answered me whether there were any comprehensive surveys on the needs of the elderly and whether the Steering Committee on our Population has any ideas about how we're going to deal with the aging population. Chairman, I do not have any information in hand to answer Mr. Chang's question. I'll go back and see if we have that information. I'll ask my colleagues. As for the Steering Committee on Population Policy, they are concerned with all the changes that are caused by population change. And data shows that Hong Kong will have an aging, has a, an aging population. And we're also concerned with the impact on labor market. Of the uh, because of the aging population,
Mr. Wu Chi Wai. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, I welcome the extension of the OAA to Guangdong Province. Now, I want to see if the administration will further relax the condi um, same condition of 60 days in Hong Kong. You mentioned that elderly people can choose not to return from Guangdong, but now many elderly people may not have come from Guangdong, but other provinces. So if you relax the condition, you are actually offering more choices to the elderly people as to where they can retire. And I understand that at the end of March, certain measures will come to certain schemes will come to an end. Do you have any supplementary schemes to replace um, or after, is it the case that after review you are of the view that the schemes are no longer useful? Now for those between 60 and 64, they are the so-called retirees and their needs are often ignored. So if you can extend the fair concession scheme to this group, I think you can actually prepare these people for the um, life after retirement. So an answer from the administration, please. For the Guangdong scheme or the portable CSSA scheme to Guang, um, extend to Guangdong and Fujian province, this is actually a scheme to for targeting those who choose to retire in Guangdong province. In terms of implementation, I'll ask Ms. Long to give you an answer later. For the CCF, we have close liaison with the Commission on C CF. If we are of the view that certain schemes can be a regular ones, we will, of course, go along that path. Now, as for paragraph 37, I asked my colleague from SWD to comment on that. As for the needs of those between 60 and 64, as I've said in my answer to Mr. Tang, we will look at the needs of this group when we go back. They may not be elderly people necessarily. They may be rather re retirees. And the fair concession scheme is very popular in the community, and they're actually offering real help to our recipients. The needs of those um, above 65 and under it are different, and we will have a review later in which we will consider all the related issues with the scheme. Ms. Long, for the portable CSSA scheme and the Guangdong scheme, they allow the um, elderly to live the elderly can choose to live in Guangdong or Fujian according to their needs. For the Guangdong scheme, the requirements are very relaxed. As long as they stay in Guangdong province for 60 days, they are eligible. So as long as they stay the term in Guangdong province, they will be entitled to the um, full allowance. As for those on OAA in Hong Kong, can we remove the staying condition 
In fact, such scheme targets local residents. So we hope the recipients will still maintain a link to Hong Kong. So in relaxing the staying condition to staying in Hong Kong for 60 days continuously within a year, we are actually able, we have already relaxed the um, condition. I want to say that whether they stay in Hong Kong for 60 days continuously, these people are still Hong Kong people. For the elderly people, some of them have their roots on the mainland. Please be brief. What I mean is, in leaving Hong Kong, they in fact release the burden on Hong Kong. So how come you are creating all these um, obstacles for them? If they choose to stay in Guangdong province for most of the time, they can join the Guangdong scheme. And if they choose to be on OAA in Hong Kong, they should stay in Hong Kong for 60 days continuously within a year. And for the rest of the year, they can choose to go about anywhere they like. We encounter certain technical problems in doing what you ask. Mr. Chan Kimpo, I want to talk about the means test of the CSSA. You have to take into account the financial support given by the young children. That's why we need the declaration system. We should not look at the system negatively. If we can explain why we're asking them to make such declaration. If we remove the negative connotation, then it's fine. So I think this part of the system is a, necess is a reasonable step. If you say, if you look at the declaration system negatively, then it will create worry amongst the um, young children and the elderly. Why do we have to take this step? Because we have means test, so we have to get the accurate information. And the financial support given by the young children is part of this information. Some children may really like to support their elderly parents. But some of them are already in financial hardship, and they can't support their parents. The administration just said that you will help those households that are in need. If the children still refuse to sign the declaration form, you still allow the applicant to make application. So is it the case that you have been able to resolve the, um, the problem in this way? Next question about elderly who scavenge cartons. Have you done anything to help these um, elderly people? Ms. Long, in 2011-12, we have 21 of such um, cases, successful um, CSSA applications. And at the end of um, last year, 15 of such cases. We have 180,000. who are um, on this scheme. So have you helped those who have scavenged cartons? There are many reasons why the elderly people are doing this. We have the integrated family centers under the CSWD. And if officers feel that we have to follow up on such 
cases, they will do so. If they do this out of financial needs, we will see whether they are eligible for CSSA. Scavenging. Now, um, elderly people may do this for various reasons. Financial reasons is one of them. So we have to see what their needs are in giving them help. Have you tried to understand their needs? Have you tried to understand their um, problems? Ms. Long, I'm not responsible for this issue. I, we asked the district social well, uh, office, welfare officers to have a broad brush um, inquiry. They found that um, there are many reasons behind. Some may like to continue to do this because they can meet many people through this. Some say that they try to make ends meet. Now, we're not talking about a large number of elderly people doing this. So we're simply doing an initial inquiry. Please give me a clearer answer. It seems that you say we do not have a large number of these elderly people. Is it really the case that we do not have uh, many of such cases? Not many. Now, the children can simply make a declaration and whether he is able to support their parents. If so, how much? This is the declaration. I'm not sure if it's the trend of the current administration to set up so many different councils, commissions. CSSA, DA, OAA, and measures to be rolled out, advised by the Commission on Poverty. You have a lot which are very confusing to the elderly. They don't know which scheme to apply. It's not that they are eligible for everyone. You may opt for um, scheme A, but you will not, but you lose a plan scheme B. So can you have better coordination so that the elderly people do not have to run about to ask for information in different departments before their needs are really addressed? Population above 65 in 20 Eleven, nine hundred forty thousand. Eighty percent of them are on assistance. So you see, there is a genuine need. And we're talking about long term needs. So, how come you cannot have better coordination to ease the minds of the elderly? You have set up the CCF and the Commission of Poverty, of Poverty. I think they are transitional bodies only. So at the end of the day, you have to have better coordination. We have different measures to address the different needs of the elderly. Some elderly may not know which measure can address their needs. Most of the assistance or the schemes are coordinated under SWD. For example, DAOAA and OALA. SWD officers in following the cases, they will also try to identify if the further needs of the elderly people and address them accordingly. Well, since 80 percent of um, the senior citizens are getting um, the OAA or DA, why can't we have a consolidated uh, retirement protection? Now, we said 
before that um, the um, MPF may not be a good idea, but it would take uh, 30, 40 years uh, for the effect to be felt. So in the coming 30 years, um, transitional period, can we have any consolidated uh, retirement protection for the elderly so that they don't have um, to be um, running around uh, for, for services? And if they're given a, a lump of money, they will be uh, purchasing the services that they need. Permanent Secretary. Yes, indeed. Um, in the in his policy address, um, the chief executive already made the point that um, through the Social Security and Retirement Protection Task Force under the COP, the entire retirement protection will be looked at. The chief executive also made the point that um, the existing uh, three pillar protection will be improved. Now this uh, money follow um, the user kind of um, principle uh, will be adopted uh, where appropriate. In the uh, next half of um, this year, we will be launching the CCF voucher scheme. Th this is ex exactly um, the the um, concept that would adopt the uh, money follows the user principle. Assistant Director. You're not coming through. Well, before she does uh, explain, let me just say this, uh, Chairman, if I may. This um, Social Security and Retirement Protection Task Force, I am concerned that it will be just like the um, Committee on Standard Working Hours. It is a talking shop but without any specific direction. This is my concern. If I may get in um, this final question, Chairman, the uh, portable uh, CSSA scheme and the Guangdong scheme, um, the senior citizens uh, will have um, their, their units um, taken away if they're, they're living in PRHM units. Now, they, they said that um, they may be going uh, to reside in uh, Guangdong for three to six months, and if they, they're not. Um, they're not used to it. I mean, they, they find the adapt adaptation problem. Can they come back and, and live in these units? Uh, Permanent Secretary, I can defer to my colleagues um, about um, the, the other issues, but OALA, as um, the Chief Executive said, we will uh, wait until the Guangdong scheme to be operational for some time uh, before we will consider uh, whether it is desirable to extend the OALA to Guangdong. Uh, for the existing uh, arrangement, I can defer to Ms. Long. Chairman, um, the portable portability scheme uh, for Guangdong and Fujian. If um, they or the, they and the, the spouses are living in PRH units, um, they will have to surrender the units because we have to utilize um, the public resources effectively. The Guangdong scheme is uh, of a similar nature. If um, you, you uh, collect um, the OAA, uh, the um, residence requirement would be 60 days. But uh, for Guangdong scheme, they can't even stay uh, in Hong Kong for 60 days. They would like to reside in, in Guangdong. Now, under the Guangdong scheme, it is uh, stipulated that um, they will have to surrender their PRH units, or they, they should have uh, their names deleted uh, from the tenancy. But there is an adaptation period, and they can keep um, the unit uh, for three months uh, before they take the final decision. If they choose to um, stay on the um, Guangdong scheme, the Housing Authority will be writing to them a letter of um, reassurance. If they experience adaptation problem later on in their life, uh, they will be allotted a PRH unit uh, without have to queue, uh, queue up all over again. I'm wondering whether my colleague from the housing um, has anything to add. Well, a gentleman is not speaking through. 
Right, thank you, Chairman. In paragraph 31, we've made it very clear that um, for those uh, who are living in the um, residential homes and for those uh, who are joining um, the portability uh, scheme uh, for Guangdong and Fujian, there will be a letter of assurance uh, written to them. Dr. Kwok, well, the government is not committed. Well, the government is um, incapable of doing anything. We are trying to make sure that um, the, the senior citizens can be helped. Now, this paper is um, a reworking of uh, previous documents. I think the best um, moment um, to help the, the uh, poor uh, would be to offer them uh, some kind of allowance um, by the time they retire. Now, this is um, the subject that, um, that has uh, torn the fabric of um, society. Now, the government um, is uh, criticizing those uh, who are advocating universal retirement protection. If the three pillar uh, protection scheme uh, is uh, good enough, we don't have to talk about this at all. Now, there are all kinds of uh, flaws with regard to the MPF, and the administrative costs uh, are uh, prohibitively high. Now, half of the, uh, the, the funds are making a loss um, uh, for five to ten years. Now, I find it uh, rather uh, surprising. Some colleagues uh, don't even understand uh, what the declaration uh, form is. If um, some, if a child uh, would like to support uh, financially uh, the, uh, his parents, uh, he's not a bad boy. Now, if um, uh, the major problem is that uh, some colleagues uh, don't really have any clue. Now, uh, Lewis, um, I mean, I remember the French um, emperor, um, Louis, uh, Louis, uh, Louis XVI, um, his wife uh, asked the poor people um, to eat cakes instead of anything else. I mean, the, there are some children who, who don't even want to sign the declaration form. Um, to state that they're not supporting um, their parents financially, and the parents cannot um, obtain an CSSA. Now, if you don't want to see these elderly people um, scavenging uh, for cut box boxes, um, then um, you should um, purify um, the city. You should um, get rid of um, the the cut box boxes. Uh, in in Japan. Um, there, there was um, a deputy prime minister who made uh, this ridiculous remark, and I don't think um, the administration has any foresight. Now, what you said here, like a dental, um, you you said that uh, forty-nine thousand people are benefiting. I, I think a lot of the figures have been inflated. Many senior citizens are not on CSSA, but they they all the teeth uh, have become rotten without any. Uh, care at all. The government merely provides uh, the emergency dental service and that's to um, extract um, the, the teeth uh, without any follow up care. The government is um, aware of these problems. The dentists are telling them all these problems, but the government is turning a deaf ear. Also, um, the medical care for the elderly is um, really uh, a joke. Now, the uh, health care centers have a long queue uh, of uh, for four at least four years and for senior citizens. So what sort of uh, coordination is um, done by the administration? Now, the, now for the um, subsidized um, RCHEs, and I think um, the, um, the vouchers that uh, you're offering are really window dressing. And you, you are asking the uh, NGOs uh, to provide the services uh, on the cheap. And I don't think the government should resort to these um, um, dirty tricks, um, uh, this uh, kind of window dressing. And you're not doing anything in the way of uh, retirement protection. The senior citizens should be given the minimum uh, health care. A service. The drug formulary should be abandoned uh, for those uh, aged above the age of 60. What can the COP do? C.Y. Long uh, said that um, 
Housing is、um, one of the top priorities for the administration. I think he is、uh, really、um, talking really big about it without any concrete action. I, I'm wondering what they can achieve in this regard here. Paragraph sixty-six, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight of the policy address、uh, covers this.、Uh, cover this particular area.、Um, Paragraph ninety-six、um, refers、um, to the、uh, task force on social security and retirement protection of the COP. Will、uh, look look into、um, uh, different views. It is also pointed out that、um, there will a tripartite、um, contributory retirement protection scheme would be controversial, and there is also this、uh, sustainability problem. But the、uh, the task force、uh, will adopt.、Um, please do not read out、um, the the PA. Please answer the question. We 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 can read、uh, the policy address. I'm asking about the specific measures. Where it's up to them how she answers the question. Although you can you can be displeased about it. We will be analyzing all the views objectively and map out the way forward regarding、uh, retirement protection and forward consensus. Let the、um, member ask whether there is a direction and the foresight. I think、uh, from this、um, quotation, we can see that there is indeed、um, foresight and direction. For the existing measures, I defer to、um, my colleague.、Um, Uh, regarding、um, the、uh, the voucher scheme, we're not、uh, really offering the services on the cheap、um, and、uh, deceive the senior citizens. We are helping、um, the senior citizens um, to um, age、uh, in place. Yes, some、um, chairman, the CCF、uh, voucher scheme is a pilot. It is not、uh, in substitution for existing services. Now this、um, this is a scheme whereby money follows、um, the users. But we don't have to go into detail about the scheme. We we did、uh, spend two hours on this before. What the five thousand、um, dollars? The honourable member asked、uh, whether the the amount is on the low side. Now, when we discussed the CCS、um, voucher scheme, it was、uh, last year. So we adopted、um, the、uh, the the fees、um, for the.、Um, Daycare centres、um, last year. Now this is going to be implemented in in September, so we have to、uh, use the、um, a, a daycare centre,、uh, the unit cost for this centre in September 2013 and 14. So when after the budget,、um, we will have、um, the the new、um, amount. I'm sure this is going to be higher than the five thousand dollars. What about dental care and the coordination? Where、well, you spend an awful long time、um, making the points, and what、well, they they will get away with it. Well, they will not get away with it.、Um, please、um, queue up for the second round. The government is very very stupid. Mr. Lam Kwok Hong, it's a cunning administration. They say they roll out schemes related to aging. In place, and they say they have to identify sites for the OCHEs, and they can increase over a thousand places. What about schemes not requiring any sites to be identified? For example, the CCS voucher scheme. Apart from giving them vouchers, what else are you going to do? What are you going to do with the scheme? You only provide for forty-three percent of those in need. What about those remaining seventy fifty-seven percent? How can these remaining number of people age in place? And how are you going to expand the RCHEs? Permanent Secretary, I defer to Ms. My colleague. For the RCHEs, we have several approaches. First, increase the number of sub subsidized places. Secondly, in eleven sites, we have already re reserved room for places. You say your priority is age in place. I think you can provide better services in the 
subsidized places. For those on CSSA living in RCHE, they suffer a lot. My question is for the administration. When can you really achieve Asian place? Because living in the subsidized RCHE is not equal to age in place. Let me talk about community care service. We do not have a lot of service providers. Not a lot of NGOs are providing this service. So we would like to encourage the market to do more here. We can provide 1,200 vouchers voucher so the elderly people can choose two kinds of services. First, daycare center services and escorting services. What do we mean by that? Elderly people sometimes need care services and they may require some professionals to come up to help them do some exercise or some training. Which I mean I don't think she's answering my answering my question. The vouchers are simply a transitional scheme. They spend the all the money, all the value within a short period. You say you have um, centers, but I can tell you the demand will exceed the supply. And after they've spent all the value in the vouchers, what are they going to do in the rest of the year? And they're not entitled to, the, to a place in the subsidized LCHEs. Do you know how many are living in private LCHEs? Give me the number. And they are not exactly in the community. So what do you ask these people to do? Should they kill themselves? Now the pilot scheme will is a four-year one. And under the scheme, we ask the service providers to provide service up to four years. We will look at the effectiveness of the scheme as well. So for those elderly under the pilot scheme, if their needs are genuine, they can enjoy the service up to four years. Now let's look at paragraph 14. What sort of foresight do we see here? You simply quote or highlight money follow the users. But I'm telling you, you're talking about a small amount, not a lot of money. For example, you give $1,000 to a person which should last for a month. That's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough if you pay them $5,000 for a year. Even for those who are worst off living in the RCHEs, they do not want this. We hope with the scheme we can encourage elderly people to stay in the community. Now, whether five thousand dollars is enough, we set the amount by looking at the cost of the existing services provided in the daycare centers, and community care services. 5,000 divided by 12, 5,000 per month. Well, you've used up your time, Mr. Lang. I think you have to queue up again. Mr. Alan Lung. Thank you, Chairman. Now, I want to follow up on the CCS voucher scheme, which is a pilot scheme. I'm sure the administration understands that for the Singleton elderly, they already enjoy meals delivery services. So how are the two schemes interact, interacting with each other? Some social workers have already organ, um, arranged for meals to be delivered to elderly people twice a day, and some elderly people enjoy escorting services to go to um, medical checkups. 
So what do you mean by the voucher scheme, the CSS, CCS voucher scheme? For the idea of money follow the users, this isn't the first time. This is not the first time you mentioned this point. You say for the scheme you have to collect sufficient information to see whether you can really realize money follows the users. The scheme, the health care voucher scheme was rolled out in 2009. And still for the CCS voucher scheme, it is a pilot one. When you set it down as a pilot scheme, have you identified what sort of information you have to gather? before you roll it out. And what sort of summary do you need? And how can this information take the scheme further? Now, for the paragraph, under the health care voucher scheme, you say you double the amount from 500 to 1,000, and the pilot scheme will be converted to a recurrent one. So is it the result you gain? From the first, uh, from the pilot scheme. If I misunderstand you, perhaps you can explain it further to me. In paragraph fifteen, now can you tell us on what basis? And with what information will you extend the pilot scheme to other schemes? And what sort of other schemes are we looking at? And do you have a timetable to do that? Let me explain what this pilot scheme is about. We will ask those on the waiting list, those elderly who are on the waiting list but are not receiving any services. Since they are already on the list, we would like to offer community service, care service to them as soon as possible. Now, this is a pilot scheme, so we have to look at how well it is received by the elderly people and whether these services can actually help the encourage the elderly people to stay in the community in a safe manner. We have to look at the activities of daily living to see whether they can actually stay in the community. And we have to see whether through the scheme we can delay their being admitted to RCHEs. Now, they can still be on the waiting list on the RCHEs. Their names will not be removed. But with the pilot scheme, they can try out the daycare center services and some community care services. With this experience, they may feel better assured and they may feel that they do not really need the services in RCHEs and they will choose to age in the community. At present, those who are enjoying the escorting services and meal delivery services, is it the case that they cannot, they are not eligible to the CCS voucher scheme? Correct. We will gather data concerning the number of recipients from the NGOs. We will also send out questionnaires to the elderly so that they can tell us how satisfied they are with the scheme. We we'll also see whether we can ease the stress of the carers through the scheme. If you can supply the questionnaire samples to the subcommittee, it would be a better idea. We need more than a year for preparation. We have to select the 
service providers, we have to assess whether they are up to standard. And we also have criteria for the service providers. So I think we can supply the information to you in September. Please submit the um, paper in September then. My question, first of all, I want to express regret on behalf of this subcommittee. We received the reply from the Commission on Poverty. We asked last time for, um, for them to submit agenda, etc., to us. But the reply we have is that all the materials for discussion in the Commission are restricted materials. The subcommittee is here to give advice and suggestions to Commission set up by the administration. But the LESHCO cannot get anything from it. So subject to members' agreement, we will write a letter saying that we cannot, since we cannot um, have any, since we are not consulted about that work, we express our regret. If there's no objection, we'll write such letter. Now, coming back to my question. Policy address, paragraph 104, which is about the RCHEs and RCHDs. They have to wait for several years before they can get a place. As far as I understand, half of those elderly people on the list, before they can get a place, they already pass away. So can the administration set down a minimum period for such a, uh, for the waiting time and can you increase the number of places so that the elderly people can have a better idea as to how long they can wait so can, is it can you set down the time to 3 years like um those on the waiting list of public housing So can you tell the elderly people how long they have to wait before they can get a place? And can you ha do you have a target for the future? If you cannot do this, I have a follow-up question for the Housing Department and SWD. Now, housing, can you set down a percentage for the newly built public housing to be allocated to disabled people or elderly people. Because without it, we'll have to wait for your planning. So since the representatives from the two departments are here, can you undertake to do what I'm asking? The waiting, average waiting time for RCH is 23 months. Um, for care and attention homes, um, it would take um, seven to eight months. Uh, the board place um, institutions that Staffing ratio uh, and also um, the space requirement uh, are higher than what is prescribed uh, under the law. Over the years, we've been increasing the um, places uh, for the RCHEs. I can tell members that uh, when we allocate um, the places um, to the senior citizens, um, they would choose um, the kind of accommodation or the location, but for um, care and attention homes, 20% uh, of them um, do not take uh, what is offered. Or oh, 30% um, in in the um, attention homes. So, 
the senior citizens um, should not um, join the queue unless um, there is um, a need. There are some uh, elderly people who are not uh, desperate uh, for uh, the home, and if they um, join the queue unnecessarily, it would um, lengthen the queue, and some may be unfortunately die waiting. And I hope that um, they, they should um, first of all choose uh, aging in the community first. In the new housing estates, uh, should there be any um, provisions uh, for the uh, homes for the elderly, uh, for the dis disabled elderly, or for for the um, intellectual impaired elderly? Yes, um, in the housing estates, the new ones. I mean, if uh, subject to uh, space uh, requirement. Well. Would there be any specific requirements so that it would be suitable? But housing estates are for human habitation. It's not a question of whether you are prepared to allocate um, the, the space for this purpose. Who can take the question? Madam Lo. Chairman, thank you. I'm sure that this is the, a dear to members' heart for the um, residential care homes. Uh, and the, the housing authority um, will identify land uh, for this purpose. Uh, we will be liaising with um, the, the uh, SWD to see whether we um, provide um, the, the homes or we build uh, the, the rental units uh, for the senior citizens. The housing authority would pay particular attention uh, to the space requirement in this regard. Well, if uh, you allocate uh, units to the senior citizens, um, they they have the need for housing. I'm talking about uh, those uh, senior citizens uh, with a need for care. Would there be a specific um, ratio allocated? Now, of course, the whole of Hong Kong is looking for land, but are you looking for land uh, for f uh, to meet the needs of the senior citizens who need particular care? Can you give us the undertaking today? If not, um, I'll pursue the matter later. Ms. Chen Yunhan, uh, for the first time. Well, I have a um, couple of meetings or three meetings uh, this morning, uh, back to back. Um, I find it um, rather rather interesting. Now, this um, elderly poor has been around for a long time. I don't think the permanent secretary will be in a position to answer the question. But I'm not uh, really contented uh, with the reply. Now you are implementing the OALA. Would it be going anywhere uh, far enough? Two thousand two hundred dollars financially. Would would that be anywhere near sufficient? Chairman, the welfare services panel um, discussed the matter. We we asked the administration. About this before, the whole of Hong Kong is concerned about um, these senior citizens who did make contribution to Hong Kong, and they they are uh, really tormented by the um, government policies. How does um, the COP handle the matter? You were sitting on the uh, COP, Mr. Chairman, and you still are, and in fact. There are many senior citizens who are in a desperate situation. The government is so heartless uh, towards this uh, whole issue. The chief executive uh, is minded to, to handle the matter, but I don't think um, they are um, being, they're being nice enough um, to the senior citizens. I do think you're dealing with uh, the matter at a policy level. I feel really sad um, talking about this. There are some who are scavenging for cut box boxes, and there are some who are residing residing in China. We do have um, the, the funding available. Now, those uh, who have the MPF uh, will not be able to survive after retirement. You have um, the offsetting arrangement against. Um, Long service payment and service payment, and they only get um, ten thousand dollars in their account. The 
I mean, I, I am very worked up about it. Given the aging population, how are you going to um, address the problem of um, these aging workers? Now, the FTU uh, said that um, the retirement protection scheme, universal or integrated uh, universal retirement scheme, would be a good idea. Now, of course, um, this problem uh, cannot be attributed to the existing administration, but the government seems to have uh, brushed aside uh, this particular issue. Now, these uh, senior citizens uh, have made tremendous contribution to Hong Kong. Um, I, the the the, um, the government is is at fault. Um, their, their faults are, are so long that it cannot be um, it cannot be exhaustive. We we'll just we we'll save some time for the administration. Well, I'm so unhappy about it. Um, the OALA, you have twisted um, the situation. Permanent secretary, this is not uh, something that has uh, anything to do with you. But please uh, tell C. Y. Long. He has given the undertaking. He has given the pledges in the manifesto that this is a serious problem. So, Chairman, I I hope ultimately that um, they are not going through the motion. They should be addressing this. Um, uh, elderly poor, elderly poverty problem, uh, with uh, all earnest, uh, with all uh, sincerity. Permanent Secretary, Chairman, Miss Chen Yunhan um, expressed concerns about the um, elderly people. So are we? We all, we're all getting old. When dealing with um, the elderly problems uh, we we approach this um, from various means and the CSSA don't don't talk about it you mean you're working me up you are distorting the whole thing the, the chief executive uh, said that we do need a consensus um, to take forward the universal retirement protection I find it so so disappointing you don't really have to to explain in this way because you're modeling the, the matter. I mean, I just like to have an outpouring of uh, my discontent. I mean, I need to, I need, I need to relieve myself of all these um, discontent. All right, there are five members uh, for the second round. Mr. Fernando Jung has a motion. Let me get this um, out of the way first. Mr. Tenkapio, second round. All right, six um, for the second round. Uh, perhaps uh, we can extend the meeting uh, by 15 minutes to 1 p.m. All right, let's um, get the motion out of the way first. Uh, is it being xeroxed? All right, let's let let me proceed like this. Uh, we have to uh, set aside 10 minutes uh, for the um, outstanding items. Uh, perhaps uh, we should have uh, a question and answer session till. Um, Twelve uh, fifty. Fernando Zhang, Li Chang Yan, Chong Pok Chi, Kuo Wei Kong, Tang Ka Piu, K K Fong. Two minutes each. Two minutes. Question and answer. Right. Don't need an answer. I mean, it's a waste of time uh, soliciting an answer. But the more I talk about it, and the more worked up I am. This uh, long-term care. Uh, she is um, asking the senior citizens uh, not to be institutionalized who would like to be institutionalized i mean this is a really off the wall kind of remark i mean this this is an and she also asked um, whether the um, scavengers have any particular reason that there was a, a professor who made who completed a report um the csa hk uh, cssa uh, uh, css conducted a report i mean he, she's uh, really shooting her mouth off and society confidentiality uh, regarding the uh, COP uh, information. I think we are being too charitable, uh, uh, expressing our regret over it. We're giving one or two minutes. Perhaps I like to move a motion here, very sim simply. Yes, a motion, please. Uh, that that is um, to to uh, abandon the the um, children's uh, declaration form to state um, that they're not supporting their their, their parents financially. We should have um, universal. Uh, retirement protection. We should have CSSA applied um, on an individual basis. This is the fundamental way to deal with um, the elderly poverty problem. I'd like to save a bit of time so that we can get this um, motion um, handled um, straight away. 
right, two minutes um, for the um, question and answer. Perhaps three minutes. Mr. Peter Chung, you have a second there, any supplement? No. If not, um, shall we put it to the vote? Have you all got a copy of um, the motion? Let me read it out. In the light of um, the elderly poverty problem in Hong Kong, we urge uh, the administration to, to get rid of um, the declaration system and uh, allow application of CSSA on an individual basis and to revamp um, the um, pension scheme uh, and to bring in the universal retirement protection to um, um, eliminate um, poverty among the poor, the elderly poor. An objection, abstention. Mr. Kwok, well, there is mention of a revamp of um, the MPF, the FTU. Well, we'd like to see this happen as well. But here in this uh, subcommittee on poverty, is this uh, within our remit? Uh, should we remove this? Well, if you think of uh, MPF um, having to do with um, poverty, then they would be included. Well, the MPF um, would have everything to do with um, the elderly poor. Uh, because of the offsetting arrangements, we should be included. I understand that um, the Welfare Service Panel will discuss the uh, universal retirement protection, so we're not discussing this uh, here at this uh, subcommittee. All right. You didn't raise a hand. I, I thought I thought we have um, got this out of the way. Chairman, I don't have any particular views here, but um, it is um, illogical. Um, to include this, but with great reluctance, uh, we have to include this uh, in the motion. I mean, it's uh, logically flawed, but I mean, with uh, great reluctance, we have to include it, and we will support it. Any abstention? Any objection? Abstention? All right, unanimously carried. All right, as I said, a couple of members would like to have a second go at the issue. Um, Fernando Chung, Li Chuk Yen, Chung Kwok Chu, Teng Ka Pio. KK Fong, two minutes each. Fernando Zhang, please. Well, I think it's a waste of time, really. That's not what I have to say. Li Chuk Yen, well, a waste of time notwithstanding, I still have to say something. I asked the Permanent Secretary a question about uh, CY Leung's manifesto. He has uh, given the pledge that the Fruit money and the CSA would be amalgamated, and also uh, the um, asset limit uh, uh, will be relaxed. So, uh, have you received any instruction uh, to to get this done and to uh, make good um, CY loans and uh, pledges in the manifesto, or have you been? Uh, you haven't been given an instruction to do so, and you just. Um, Pretend that it doesn't exist. Permanent Secretary Parallel 97 of the uh, policy address uh, refers to the fact that uh, some views uh, are that um, the uh, CSSA, um, the uh, uh, the OAA should be reviewed, and also um, the Task Force on Social Security and Retirement Protection will be keeping um, the options open. And we'll analyze and, and uh, explore uh, in this area. What well, I don't think you need to um, listen to any views. I mean, this is um, CY Leung's uh, pledges. Where well, if you have to listen to um, public opinions, it would mean that uh, we do not have to follow through uh, CY Leung's manifesto. It's a question of implementation, it's not a question of consultation. You might need to consult on the implementation, but I doubt whether you are committed to implementing this particular pledge, Permanent Secretary. Well, as I said a moment ago, paragraph 97 of the policy address that the Chief Executive specifically made the point that um, there are views uh, that um, the CSSA, um, the OALA, and the OAA should be uh, reviewed. And this would have um, significant um, implications on the policy, so there is a need um, for this to be uh, to be uh, included in the agenda of um, the Task Force on Social Security and Retirement Protection for discussion. 
I'm simply asking you whether what's said in the manifesto will be realized. I'm not going to ask her to answer my question because she's simply repeating herself. Mr. Chen Kuo Chu. Now, we've been discussing on the staying condition that is um, of 60 days in Hong Kong. Can you submit a paper to tell us the logic behind this condition? Why 60 days instead of 59 instead of 100 days? As soon as we get a grasp on the logic behind, we can provide you with some we can provide some suggestions to the elderly people who choose to retire in Guangdong as to how they can enjoy the CSSA. I think with this, the government can save some money and you can make life easier for the elderly as well. So please submit such a paper. Secondly, we've talked a lot about the projection of the aging population. We also said that one third of one's life will be um, spent after retirement. So we asked the administration to set down policies for elderly people. And you should also coordinate various bureaus and departments to provide more services to the elderly after they have retired. Answer from the administration. Mr. Chang asked for a paper to be submitted on the staying condition. We will prepare the paper to be submitted to the um, subcommittee as for services to the elderly and how they can be taken care of. We have addressed these in the paper. So in answering Mr. Chang's question, for what we know at present about population projection, the relevant bureaucs and departments will follow up on the situation. Paragraph 31 mentions that those who um, the condition as to how one should um, surrender one PRH flat, that is, they move into a RCHE and are hospitalized for over three months or join, have joined the portable CSSA scheme. Now, some of them on CSSA, they earn only 2000 or to $4,000, dollars. so I think you have to give them more time to do this. Now, if those on the Guangdong scheme, they have to now, for those who are um, on the portable CSSA scheme, you ask them to surrender the flat. But I think you should reserve the flat for them so that they can come back to live in it. Because um, they usually they have to, it takes um, several months for the elderly to get used to life in other places. For the portable CSSA scheme and the Guangdong scheme, these schemes have been explained earlier on. Now we have to look at how the Guangdong scheme is implemented, and we take your points. What do you mean by that? Are you going to do something then? For the OALA, it cannot be extended to Guangdong scheme at present. We have to wait till how the Guangdong scheme is received. All along, I've been talking about the portable CSSA scheme. I think you should not take the PLH flat from the elderly people. Don't just give um, these people three months. Instead, give them a longer time to get used to life in Guangdong. Can you do that? That will have implication on housing resources. So we have to tread with caution. Mr. Tan Carpio, just now lawmaker has mentioned a point, but I think it's worth repeating 
that is the issue of dental services. Paragraph 38. You expect 13,000 elderly will stand to benefit from it, but at present, the number is lower. Now, some who are healthy, you do not help them. But for some others, because of their dental problems, they suffer from other problems as well. So will you extend the scheme? Ms. Lau. At present, we help those elderly who are not on CSSA and are not in receiving um, inter greater home care services or enhanced home and community care services. We will continue to review the measure to see how well it is received. We will also see how the $100 million is spent. When will you expand the scheme? As for a review, perhaps in the second quarter. You mean second quarter this year? Yes, from April to June. That my question. Follow up on the RCHEs. I talked to the service providers. You say thirty six is the average. Um, waiting time. At present, you do not have um, any regulatory measures. I think the administration does not have any planning. As for land allocation, you set down a certain number of um, a certain area to be allocated for services to the elderly. For example, a whole block in Shamshapo is reserved for elderly services provision. So if you already set down the condition, people will not object to the condition after they move in. That's the same for the private housing estate. So. If people know beforehand there will be such facilities, they will set the price accordingly. And that's why I think the government should adjust its mindset. You may say you increase the places by 1,700, and that may still take us to um, 36 months. People who are on the list still waiting are having a hard time. So can you put in more thoughts to that, Ms. Lee? We will continue to identify suitable sites, including sites in public housing estates and private development, as well as some development under the URA. As for the average waiting time, Chairman, you are right. Is the average waiting time? Some elderly may have to wait longer. That's because they have a choice, even though they are on the waiting list. Some elderly applicant ask for a place in a specific elderly home in a specific area. They will have to wait till a vacancy is available in that particular home. So their waiting time will likely be longer than those on the central waiting list. Because exactly the elderly have a choice. And on the other hand, I don't think the public would like to remove the choice, the right to choose from the elderly. Because we're talking about possibly the last place they will stay in. 
And that's why that explains why some elderly wait longer, some sh uh, shorter. We upgrade the quality of subsidized places. We hope they will choose such places. In terms of space and manpower ratio, we have upgraded these areas substantially. We have grade A, grade B places. We try, we have already upgraded some grade B places to grade 1. And in that, we hope we can speed up the allocation of places to elderly people. Uh, that's all for our discussion. Thank you for coming here. Uh, we hope, I hope next time we can get uh, answers with more substance. We still have um, two more items on the agenda. You may stay if you would like to join us. In the past, we have drafted certain item certain items for discussion in the past two years under this subcommittee. The members may think certain topics are very important. And we can ask the Secretariat to update the proposed items. I hope starting from next month we can work on the reports on the on two updated items with updated data and subject to members ap approval agreement then the updated report will be treated as our views so if we find that we, we have already got sufficient information concerning certain items, we can delete it from the agenda. We have more new members in this term. And in discussion, we can always update our previous reports. Before the meeting, I asked members whether they have any items for discussion in the subcommittee. I have got three. One from Mr. Charles Mock. Relationship between information technology and poverty. For example, subsidies to children to acquire computers. How is this scheme going? My proposal is one on relationship between poverty and housing. The administration classified people into different groups, children, elderly, and other groups. They have different needs, of course. For housing needs, if only um, the poor people can get a public housing public unit, then they will be much better off. So I would like to look at the relationship between the housing needs and poverty. We can also cover redevelopment and the income limit for public housing at states, uh, public housing units. Third area, health and poverty. The Medical School of Hong Kong U released a midterm report two years ago. One item in the report is about people's level of happiness in relation to poverty. I think it's worthwhile for us to look at the relationship between poverty, levels of happiness and health, so this is the um, third proposed item. Any other proposed items? If not, we can work on these three first. What about setting priority? Compu housing, health or health care, and then IT information technology. We can discuss these three first, and uh, we welcome a further proposal.
for those who, w reports that can be easily updated, one or two can be submitted in the coming two months for further revision. Thirdly, members propose to go to Northern Europe, Korea, mainland to observe their poverty policies. I understand that the SOCO has arranged a trip to Australia. Hong Kong CSS. Yes. Rather has um, arranged this trip to Australia. So will uh, the members of this subcommittee also go to a trip to observe the poverty relief policies in other countries? Any further proposals and AOB? If not, thank you. Meeting timetable has already been distributed to members.